Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. So Allah Khan here and today what? Maybe the last, okay. So the last bias in configuration and let that be a constant current bias. So, so this is, uh, I believe, number nine. Whatever it is, that doesn't matter. So it is a constant current bias. Fine. All right. So what do we have in this case is we as the name suggests we have a constant current source we have a constant current source so if this is your VCC this is your RC and similarly then you have your emitter side this is your emitter resistance or, or let's say we neglect this emitter resistance but the main thing is that you have a constant current source this is providing the constant current ie and further it's grounded and similarly the base terminal is also grounded let's say through rb or without rb whatever is the case so have a look this is providing a constant current right yes so as you know ic is what ic is beta times ib ic is beta times ib and ie is what ie is beta plus one times ib this you know from your basics so you know beta is large enough you know if beta is large beta is quite a high value such that beta plus one is approximately equal to beta yes so this would imply what that ie is equal to beta times ib now if ie is beta times ib which is this thing which is ic right so this implies what that you've got your emitter current to be approximately equal to the collector current and which is what which is constant this is constant as well this is constant and why is this constant so due to the constant uh, current source this is constant due to the constant current uh, source right so if this is constant this implies if these currents are constant we see e would be constant if the currents are constant the voltage we see e would be constant so we see e is constant the current ic is constant so does this not mean that q point is at a constant position yes yes so the main thing is that the q point is most stable this is the most stable configuration of what of the of the of the of this biasing networks that we have studied why because we've got the current the collector current the emitter current we've got it a constant value and we've got the vce at a constant value which means the q point we've got a constant value the effect of temperature is not affecting it temperature is not affecting it the value of vbe is not affecting it temperature effect cross vbe effect cross why because we have a constant current source so this constant current source has given us the collector current to be always constant due to that we see e is always constant ie is constant so this is one of the most stable configurations right yes so this was just a smaller topic right the next is if we talk about a drift one topic of drift you will find it in the books so let's say we talk about it so drift is what drift this is the next topic of the day this is topic number two for this video drift is what this is the change of q point this is change of q point but due to what due to change in vbe due to change in vbe with temperature so if your temperature changes your vbe changes vbe is what it's the barrier potential of a followed by spin junction diode and you know the temperature coefficient that is a negative 2.5 millivolts per degree rise in uh, centigrade which means if your temperature is rise by one degree celsius the 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 barrier potential would reduce by 2.5 millivolts right so how to negate this effect how to negate this effect so there are two methods generally written in the books number one is using a pnp transistor 
Now, why have I written PNP transistor over here? Because the reference transistor that we always take is an NPN. If the reference transistor you are using in your circuit is a PNP, then with that you couple an NPN transistor, right? How is that? So, I'm telling you. If this is your RC, right? This is your collector terminal, emitter terminal. You have your what? The emitter resistance RE. Fine. And similarly, you have an R over here, let's say. Let's say it's denoted by an R. This comes to the base and similarly this goes into the emitter of the other leg. So have a look. This is grounded. Yes, yes. And similarly you have this over here. You have a, a, a voltage divider sort of a configuration over here. So this is R2, this is R1 and these are all supplied through a single VCC source, right? If this is, let's say, R, or you could say a base resistance as well, or but it's being divided, let's say we use it as, as an R, right? So what happens is, what happens is, have a look. This is an NPN transistor. This is our main transistor that we are, we are having in our circuit. So to negate the effect of VBE, we use a PNP the opposite manner right yes how is that so over here the potential over here now this potential is the potential of the base vb right similarly over here you would have a ve similarly the collector card so what do you have is let me apply a kvl let me apply a kvl through this direction in this direction right so what would be the case you have a vb a barrier potential kvl as indicated so you have a vb then have a look this would be this would be at minus this would be at plus why is that why is that because this is a pnp transistor so over here p side is the emitter terminal right so the emitter terminal is, is at a higher potential the base side is at a lower potential so you have a minus to plus but you have uh, you have a plus v e v this time why because e is at a higher potential then similarly you have a minus v b e and then you have a minus IE times RE and this is set to zero and is this right? It is right. Now the value of IE would be what? IE. IE would be VB plus VBE. Uh, no, no. Minus VBE plus, uh, plus VEB and this is whole divided by the resistance re now have a look the two transistors would be of the same material for instance they are of a silicon material or we've seen silicon for so long for instance they are for the germanium material so for the germanium material let's say whatever is the value of vbe would be the same value of vbe but with the opposite polarities so the opposite polarities we've already mentioned by the signs through the kvl let's say this is equal to 0.3 so have a look you put 0.3 over here you put 0.3 over here you have a minus you have a plus so what would be the case they would cancel out and ie would come out to be what the main thing is that VBE is equal to VEB for the same material of transistor. So IE would come out to be what? VB divided by RE. IE would come out to be VB divided by RE, which means that this has become independent of the value of VBE. Previously, it was depending on the value of VBE, but if you introduce another transistor in of the opposite nature, what does it has? It negates the effect of the VBE potential. Even VBE changes with temperature, your current will not change because we have cancelled that drop by using a PNP transistor in this case. So this has become independent of, independent of, VBE. Fine. Yes. This is the first method. The second is by using an operational amplifier. Using an op amp. So basically you don't know anything about op amp at this stage. But just, just a little, just a little thing. Op amp is this sort of a circuit. This sort of a circuit. You have a plus terminal, you have a minus terminal. If, if, if the circuit is connected like this, wait, 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 wait. This is VCC. This is RC. Fine, and then, uh, no, 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 wait. This is VCC, this is RC. This is your emitter, emitter resistance RE. 
Yes. What do you have is like this. If this is your operational amplifier, this this sort of a, this is for the operational amplifier. So if you have the minus connected to the to the to the circuit, this is called a negative feedback. If you have the plus connected, this is called a positive feedback. The voltage over here, the voltage applied at plus is not to be plus V at minus V at minus it is a it is supposed to be minus V. But in the negative feedback, you have to remember this that for a negative feedback, the only thing you need to remember is that plus V is equal to minus V, which means the 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 this does not mean that plus 20 would be equal to minus 20 okay this means that the this plus and minus are the terminals okay these are inverting and non-inverting terminals we'll see that in a detail but for here you need to remember that if this is a negative feedback circuit so the voltage at both the terminals are the same which means that the plus terminal if you have a 20 volts at the negative terminal you will also have a 20 volts right this is one point and the next and the next point is that the, the input current to an amplifier is zero input current to an op amp is a zero so this is the first point this is the second point let's say the voltage uh, have i connected it wrong somewhere this is connected to the base wait 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 i have connected it wrong this is something like this plus minus and and this is over here so let's say the voltage over here is V, right? So the voltage at the negative terminal would be V and at the positive terminal would be also V. This is for the negative feedback and vibration. And the input current I'm saying is zero. So let's say the current, uh, you know, over here through this resistance is I. The current over here through this resistance is I. The current coming through from the emitter is IE, right? Yes, but I say that the input current to the op amp is zero, which means no current will flow over here. Over here, I is equal to zero because the input current to a pump is zero. Why? We'll see that. We'll see that. That we don't have anything to do with. Which means what? That this I that I'm talking about is my emitter current, the same emitter current, IE, because no current is flowing over there. So all the current from IE is going through resistance R, R or RE. So this is what? This is the same voltage V that I have considered over here upon RE. So V upon RE. So have a look. Is this not independent of VBE again? This is again independent. So this is independent of VBE again. This is again independent of VBE. And I believe that is it. So I finished this over here. Operational amplifiers we'll see in a greater detail. We'll see in a greater detail. But just remember that one is an inverting terminal. That is the minus. It gives you a phase shift of 180 degrees. The other is a non-inverting. That is a plus. In the negative feedback, the voltage or the input at both are the same. So if this is a V connected over here, so at both you have a V plus V for instance. Right? And the input current to a pamp is zero, which means all the current that is coming from the emitter terminal is all and all passing through the resistance nothing is coming at this side so which means the emitter current is the same as i which is the voltage v upon r whatever the voltage v at the emitter terminal right so that is how we make it independent of vbe again so we have eliminated the drift problem drift is what that is the change of the q point due to the change in vbe with the change of temperature and this was the constant current bias in which we had a constant current source and i believe i finished this video over here we have a topic of multiple BJT networks and miscellaneous BJT networks in the book. So I don't think I need to do it because that would be again the practice of the, uh, the KVL and KCLs, right? So I think I should move on uh, directly to the current mirror circuits. Whatever you say, I think that should be it for the BJT networks, right? So see you in the next video. Maybe we see some examples or maybe we directly go into the current mirrors whatever it be see you there very soon inshallah till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you do remember me in your prayers do subscribe to the channel goodbye